Welcome to Talking Images, the officially unofficial podcast of the ICM Forum, which of course can always be found at icmforum.com. Today's topic is our cinematic journey. What sparked the passion for cinema and how do we get where we are today? So let's start with our probably oldest member. Take it away, Gary. Well, good morning or good afternoon to you, Euros. My name's Gary. Uh, Ormazd is my screen name on the forum, Gary Old Man on ICM. I am uh, what our friend Jonas calls dinosaur old, 66 years old. Uh, my film journey, really um, serious interest started in the mid 70s. So hi there, my name's Tom from England. Um, my forum name is Film Banther. Um, I'm 32 years of old. And basically, my film journey really got going um, during my years at a university where I spent a lot of time watching films instead of studying. And it carried on from there when I discovered the uh, iCheck Movies Forum. Okay, I'm uh, Joke from the Netherlands. I'm 57 years old. My name on the forum is JVV. I was pretty late discovering movies around 2007, so I was already in my. Uh, so I at work, we were talking movies, and I thought, well, that's interesting. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Adam. Um, Adam Rich on the forum. I'm 32 from Scotland, in England. My interest really started, I would say, about 2009. Um, that's when I was at uni as well. And I started watching the Top 250 IMDb. And then not long after, I found I Check Movies. Hello, my name is Clément, I'm 25, I'm from uh, France. My uh, interest in film started about, um, I would say, eight eight years ago, uh, when I was about uh, 16, 17. Um, it pretty much started because uh, out of boredom, I would say, because I didn't have much to do. And I was listening to a lot of music back then. And um, yeah, I just started uh, watching films, just curious to see what uh, older films, let's say, would uh, look like. And I enjoy them. And uh, I joined uh, um, IMDb, started working on the top 250. Uh, then I discovered I Check Movies and the forum. And uh, I've been there ever, ever since. I'm Chris. If you ever do come visit the forum, if you're one of the magical people who are not at the forum currently, uh, you will see me posting under the name Saint Gloat. I am 29 years old, originally from Norway, but I'm currently residing in Malta. And my cinematic journey started when I was around 15, 16, and essentially just started college. And got exposed to some older films and got very curious, got very, very curious about that because before that, my idea of, I say, like older films aren't good. Mm. And once that spell was broken by actually seeing something that was older than 1980, uh, everything suddenly started to make sense. <laughs> so obviously there was a time before we got interested in films. Let's talk a little bit about what our early exposure to films were and what we thought about films before we actually viewed it more as an art form or as a hobby. And we can start again with uh, with Gary. Well, <clears throat> my journey to film was a long, slow, and torturous one, let me tell you. Um, this is like old man yelling at clouds here. When I was young, we had broadcast television or go to the theater. Those were the choices. I did always love film. My mother loved films. My great grandparents and my grandparents owned mo early movie theaters. Um, in fact, Chris knows that I actually gave a talk about that at the uh, Library of Congress last year. But uh, my gr grandparents, I they used to tell me stories about the early days, and I remember they told me that talkies ruined the movies. So this was pre VHS or anything. So. As far as regular TV, it was strictly Hollywood fare. You know, you uh, the best thing you'd see would be Hitchcock, uh, Bogart, those type of films. My interest in other movies really started expanding when public broadcasting, thank goodness, this was in the mid-70s. They showed 
on Saturday nights, they would show a foreign film or a, a silent film. So that's where I was first exposed to Bergman, Fellini, Truffaut. And then I found this book called The Great Movies uh, by William Bayer. And that really exploded my interest. It was painful because there was no way really for me to see very many of those movies. It took a long time for me to get to that. One, one outlet I had was the University of Illinois. Their student union showed classic films on, on weekends. And I was able to see some things like Citizen Kane, The Searchers, Hiroshima Mon Amour. It really took a long time for me to get where I wanted. I mean, it was, it was very expensive. If you wanted to buy a, even a VHS I bought VHS films of like uh, La Dolce Vita, and they were $40 or something, and this was in the 80s, so it was not an easy task. I can actually relate to that even growing up in the, in the 90s, because I remember like 95, 96, 97, 98, no, we didn't have a VHS system. We would actually go out and uh, rent the VHS system, <laughs> you know, uh, so essentially we'd go to the uh, VHS rental store. Uh -huh. Go in, get get the entire get get the one VHS or two VHS tapes that you actually wanted, and the VHS console. Uh, take them out for in a like one two days, watch them, and then take the entire thing back. But even even with that, Chris, was it very easy to find classic type films, or was it mostly yeah. mainstream trash? That's what I would. <laughs> mainstream trash, yeah, but yeah. mostly mainstream trash. I mean, I don't think I would even know the difference at that age, though. Well, that's true. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, the memories I have are, like, of the Jungle Book and good children's movies that pretty much everyone saw and had easy access to. Oh, and uh, the Gummy Bears. Like, every episode of the Gummy Bears for some reason, because back, <laughs> <laughs> like back then you would... Like, this is before DVD box sets, so you had, like, uh, three or four episodes on the VHS tape, you know, when you could uh, go to the rental store and get, like, get four episodes at a time. Was that gummy bears or care bears? I think it's gummy bears, isn't it? Uh, in, in Norwegian, really? it's called something entirely different. It was called Bumpy Bjorn. You know, oh, okay. Yeah, it was like the bears that would jump about, uh, they fight orcs. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard of that. I think it's French. Claire might know. Uh, no, never heard of it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure. Never mind. I, I, I might be completely wrong as well. So I'll, let me actually look that up and, yeah. and you, you guys keep talking. <laughs> well, I actually uh, remember the Gummy Bears. I used to watch that growing up as well. So you're not alone there, Chris. It was a great show. Maybe it has a different name here. So It probably does. But I think, I think almost anyone around the world that grew up in like the 90s remember this show. Uh, is it Gummy Bears? Like, like the candy? Actually, completely wrong. It's not French at all. It is actually uh, the full title, which I found on um, Wikipedia. Here is Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears. So not French at all. Very much <laughs> Disney. So yeah, keep going, Gary. So things got somewhat better in the '90s when cable TV. We had a hundred channels instead of fifty, or instead of three. We had Turner Classic Movies, uh, independent film channel. So I was able to find some things with that. But really, I wasn't able to really scratch that itch. It's really amazing now to be able to find virtually any film that you want at, at your fingertips. It's just uh, coming from where I came from, it's just amazing. And I still I still am not really used to that. I think North is so far behind the rest of the world. We had four or five channels like going into the 2000s. Like we were getting Swedish TV. That's how poor the situation were. And uh, I actually had exactly the same, same way of finding classics, especially classic foreign films, because the state channel did, did the same thing as I guess your state channel did, which was once a week. I don't remember what day it was anymore, but once a week they would show one classic. Mm -hmm. Just one. I, th I think it was like Friday evening. For a long time, that was the only way. It was either that, or actually buying the DVD slash VHS, or uh, going to the library. But I, I can talk a little bit more about the fantastic libraries in Norway a little bit later. Let's continue with uh, with Tom here. So before you got properly into cinema, like what was your exposure to cinema, and what were you thinking about it? Like how did you view films before you became a film buff? I always loved films from a very early age. Um, I've got two older brothers, uh, one seven years older than me and one ten years older than me. So a lot of the things that I watched when I was younger were perhaps not suitable for my age necessarily. 
I remember one thing that sticks out in my mind is we used to watch Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade quite a lot. And I wasn't allowed to watch a, a certain clip towards the end when a Nazi soldier um, drinks from a cup that he believes to be the Holy Grail and then uh, turns into a skeleton. My parents thought that that was uh, too upsetting for me to view. And um, also Stand By Me was one that I used to love when I was young. And again, the bit where um, kids discover the body, I wasn't allowed to see that at first. And I think that these probably justified parental bans and not letting me see the full films kind of shaped my viewing habits because I had an interest in wasn't deemed uh, suitable for my eyes from then on. And that kind of expanded into my interest in um, extreme cinema, films that had been banned or had been controversial. How did they stop you from seeing the end of the film? Did they send you out of the room? or Yeah, you know? so they'd, they'd either stop the tape or get me out of the room. I, I was very young at this, you know, maybe like four or five years old. So I, I don't think at the time, I, you know, I was too concerned with it. It was just something that, you know, took place every now and again. And I don't think that it was something that was done a lot. It's just those two films specifically that stand out in my mind. And I suppose from there, um, I went on to watching films around my friends' houses. So staying up late on on sleepovers, we'd watch things like um, Kids and A Clockwork Orange that became one of my favourite films and still is to this day. And it kind of, yeah, developed from there. Um, I was kind of interested to hear that everyone else's starting point revolves around the IMDb Top 250 because that was quite a cornerstone of, of my early viewing as well and um, another interesting thing was that uh, one of the lists on i check movies the guardian 1001 films to see before you die that list is taken from the newspaper that my dad used to buy um, and for a time i was actively working on that list before i check movies even existed just going through the inserts and ticking them off manually and i do still actually have those inserts Do you think that iTechMovies.com essentially just finalised what a lot of us are doing already, which were to find lists and try to complete them? Like what, what I actually used to do was to find a version of it online, copy all of it and put it into a Word document. So not even a spreadsheet, not fancy enough for a spreadsheet, but a Word document. And then I would either remove the title or make the title really small so that no one would have seen it. And then the other titles would be big. And if I really wanted to see a film, I would maybe put it like into like 16 or 20 pixels so that I can make it bigger than what would stand out and I would remember it for a later notice. I didn't watch a lot of TV growing up. I um, really remember my parents being uh, TV watchers either. So uh, I guess they were more the type of person to read. So I was uh, reading a lot when I was, uh, when I was younger. Uh, I guess I would watch a bit of TV here and there and watch some cartoons and stuff like that. But um, my parents were not uh, not into films at all, so uh, I don't have any memories of me sitting with my parents or sitting with uh, friends or whatever uh, watching films. So I guess it's something that uh, really um, uh, came to me by itself, let's say, and not with the help of uh, someone uh, someone close to me. Uh, so I started getting into films when I was about uh, 15, 16, as I said before. Uh, before that, I was listening to um, a lot of music, mostly. I was also living abroad back then. I was living in uh, Cyprus uh, from 12 years old to 18. Um, I was in a French school, but uh, we only had classes on the, uh, the morning and the afternoon. Most of the as afternoons would be uh, free. So I had a lot of uh, time, on, time on my hands. And uh, since I don't really like going out back then, I would just stay home, listen to music. And uh, it just... Uh, reached a point where I wanted, you know, I was starting to get curious about uh, other things, and uh, yeah, I want to. Um, I was also watching bits of films here and there, mostly like uh, French comedies from the 2000s and stuff like that. I guess I just wanted to see if there were something else, uh, something beyond that. So I uh, found about uh, IMDb. I joined. Uh, First, I only joined to uh, rate, uh, rate the films I've seen, just to uh, just to remember. Uh, I also had a spray Excel uh, sheet back then, where I would uh, 
enter all the films I've seen, my ratings, and we'd have some kind of uh, statistics with decades, year, uh, country, and stuff like that, which I still still do today. Then I started looking at uh, the IMDb top 250, like uh, pretty much, I think, uh, a lot of people here. Um, I started by the earliest films, so uh, I guess it was the Shawshank Redemption, um, uh, what are Indiana Jones, uh, Back to the Future, stuff like that, which I had never seen uh, before. Uh, then I got into the older stuff, so The Godfather, uh, 12 Angry Men, Citizen Kane, uh, Seven Samurai, stuff like that. And then I found out about uh, I Check Movies, and uh, I really liked the idea of uh, lists and uh, working through, uh, through them, uh, finding suggestions and also completing them sometimes. Uh, so I joined the website. I started working on... Uh, well, I didn't really start working on a list. Back then, I was just really into horror, horror films, so I would watch um, uh, a lot of them, anything that uh, uh, anything that I could find. Uh, it's actually when I joined the, the, the forum and started posting in March 2012 that I uh, really started focusing on uh, certain uh, lists through uh, challenges, uh, mostly, so the forum uh, are holding. And uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's about it. When I was a kid, going to the cinema was a special occasion, only on birthdays or maybe for Christmas. Most of the films I've seen was on TV. Really, on, there was only one channel, and they had movies for kids on Wednesday and on Saturday. It did show some older movies then, which I watched with my mother. I liked Gregory Peck, so those movies I watched. And she also was... Another elaborate musical. My father wasn't interested in movies at all. He went to uh, watch a movie. After about 10 minutes, he would find sleep. As I mentioned earlier, I got into the IMDb Top 50. Some guys at work who we were working on it and talking about it. And I don't think they ever finished it, but I did. And right about when uh, I was close to finishing it, I encountered uh, iCheckMovies.com. I thought, hey, more lists to do. And I finished. Uh, list that everyone else also does, the cartoon list. And I worked on some lists for a while, but I stopped working on lists and just pick some movies here and there and like exploring uh, all kinds of stuff. I grew up like, I was born in 87. I kind of, I grew up with like 80s and 90s films. So when I was a kid, um, I always watched on TV. Like I remember Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, The Terminator. I know my mum used to take me to the cinema sometimes. Um, she always tells a story when she took me to Jurassic Park. So that, that I must have been about five or six years old. I know like when she bought the tickets, the person was like worried that I was going to be scared. Um, <laughs> I, I don't actually remember seeing it. As a the first film I remember seeing is The Lion King. Um, I ended up seeing that twice at the cinema, and that was always one of my favourites. Used to me and my sister used to go to like video rental stores. There was um back in the nineties. There was like two. We had two shops um in the same street. That's how popular it was back then to rent. I mean, they were across the road from each other. Um, and I used to always get Super Mario Brothers animated TV show. Um, which I remember my sister was always very annoyed about because you get the exact same video every time. Um. And then growing up, it was basically my sister actually who was my sister was like three, three, four years older than me, um, and she was the one who was really interested in foreign films before me. Um, I remember going, went with my dad and my sister to see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I would have been about twelve. I remember my dad and I fell asleep for ten minutes, so I wasn't instantly interested in that kind of stuff. Yeah, as I. I got towards the end of uni, a year of uni, that's when I started watching Top 250. I remember what sparked the interest. I think I had a lot of free time in, in my final year of uni because I only had a couple of hours of lectures a week. Yeah, that was about 2008, 2009. I started working on that. And the list website, I can't remember. There was this website where you could check, like, it was like I Check Movies, except the only list it had was the Top 250. Just ticked off the list, basically. But this was, like, back in 2009. Um, 
And then in, I, I, eventually I wanted a better site, and that's how in 2009 I found I Check Movies. Um, because there was a whole group of us who used to post on the Facebook group, the Top 250 group, and that's kind of what started Roots of the Forum. I also remember my sister was the one who was really interested. I remember as a kid, my mum used to watch a lot of older films as well, mainly kind of crime ones. So I remember watching The Birds, for example. She watched some Hitchcock films. I have like vague recollections of watching older films. How is Dish TV, by the way? Like, are you are you guys consistently showing older films, or is it uh, just the new stuff? I mean, when it, when I was growing up, I only had four channels um, until until I was in high school. We just had four channels and um, showed a lot of it was like seventies, eighties, nineties. That was all the stuff I watched. Uh, but then once I got to high school, we got more channels. There was like classic film channels, that kind of thing. But I didn't have any interest, that much interest in older films when I was a kid, so I'm not sure how many they showed, but it wasn't, certainly not a lot. I mean, it was only four channels, so that was, there was very few options then to watch stuff. I didn't have the internet, I didn't have a computer in high school either. It's for almost everyone. So in, how was it for, like, for you, Clem, in France? Did you guys have three, four channels as well, or did you actually have a little bit of a better selection? We had more channels than, uh, than that, but... Uh... As I said before, I don't. Uh, I have never really been a TV watcher, and my parents were not really either. So yeah, sometimes they would show films, but uh, we would not really uh, watch them or anything. Uh, but if you go only on the public channels, um, yeah, you you'll find mostly some blockbusters here and there. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. So sometimes you can find some older films, but it's usually. Uh, during the night or very early in the morning so you have to uh, actually rec record them uh, unless you want to watch it at uh, 3 or 4 a.m i was all actually always around films a lot uh, because this is a little bit strange as we had to rent the vhs uh, console uh, when i was very very young with my dad like just before i was born he was a co-owner of like a small vhs rental store which went bust so he actually had a large amount of VHS tapes in the basement, uh, which, I, which I didn't see until a lot later and started, and I started going through when I was a little bit older and got interested. But so they were around and he would take some of those up, like the ones that were child friendly, and we would watch those. And we would uh, consistently go to uh, VHS rental stores and VHS shops and find like a movie for the weekend, etc. So I was always around films but not in any kind of serious way like i was completely the opposite of uh, clem in that i watched a lot of tv like before i got into movies i was really into tv shows so i would get uh, not sure if i would get the vhs tape for it but as soon as dvds came out i would get like the DVD, early dvd box sets etc uh, and at some point i think i just started tiring a little bit of of shows i didn't really find them that challenging necessarily. I didn't really feel like just casually sitting back and watching TV, for instance. I wanted something a little bit more concise, something that I'm not sure if, I think what I thought was something that mattered a little bit more, something that gave a bit more of an experience. So I thought instead of sitting and watching TV, say two, three hours in an evening, in a random evening, I could watch a movie instead or two movies instead. So I would start to try to find some movies to watch. In the beginning, that wasn't really any kind of what they call special movies. It would be what Gary referred to earlier as mainstream trash. That terrible, terrible collection of films that just aren't good. They're just, no, they're terrible. They're terrible. How could anyone ever watch such things? But, uh, but yes, I, I started slowly watching them. I did just essentially get anything that was on. I would pick films based on their covers, etc. Just watch whatever was put in front of me. And that led to watching a lot of things that just weren't really interesting. And obviously, if you watch a lot of things that aren't very interesting, the next, the next thought that comes into your mind is, what is interesting? And that's when I discovered IMDb and the IMDb Top 250. And that, that seems to be like the, uh, the line between almost all of us, including Gary, Except that his passion started a little bit earlier, but for the rest of us, it really seems like it really seems like just discovering IMDb and IMDb Top 50 is what, for almost everyone of our generation, kicked this off. 
in the beginning, I was doing the same as many of you, which was that I would ignore the older stuff, but I would kind of like see, okay, these are the big new movies that are on that list. Let's see them. And that worked out really, really well. Uh, I started getting more and more interested. I started seeing more and more stuff. It was more buried films, but I still had this extreme prejudice against older films. And I'm not sure if any of anyone else here had that, but at least it was very common in Norway to just assume that anything older wasn't any good. Like, was that your experience as well? Um, when I was younger, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think, of course. Well, I didn't really knew when film started either, so I just, um, of course, I, I knew um, I knew about uh, Nouvelle Vague and stuff like that, but uh, I didn't really, and I knew about uh, silent films and stuff, but I never really bothered uh, watching them because, you know, for me, they were um, outdated, let's say, and uh, they didn't show any uh, purpose because, you know, uh, what was made a hundred years ago was obviously... Uh, worse than what was being made uh, today. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was the way I uh, thought uh, back then. Now, yeah, my uh, feelings has uh, evolved a bit, let's say. But uh, yeah, at the beginning, I was uh, really mostly focusing on uh, recent films and uh, kind of ignoring the, the older stuff. It was when I started at college, actually. Well, actually, it, it, it's a diff it's, it was the experience at the end of like secondary school, which is that uh, they put on Amadeus, and this was essentially they would roll in one of those big hardback TVs, you know, those massive monsters. And my first reaction, this is actually really interesting because this is what sparked almost my entire cinematic journey in a way, because I saw it at this specific point and didn't like it. I'm not sure if I engaged with it in a particular way, I guess I was like 14, 15, and I had. Chico had just joined IMDb, so I had seen it on some top lists. And I remember after seeing this film, not liking it, I went to these forums, and back when IMDb forums still existed, I think it's... And I would essentially just start arguing with people on the Amadeus forum that this movie is so terrible, why does anybody like this? And then, like, two years later, when I enter college, I, I, I went to media and communication. And they had a proper auditorium. And they started Amadeus again. In cinema, I think this was one of the first films uh, they did there. And I sat down. I came in with really low expectations. I came in with all of these memories of not caring for Amadeus. But in the meantime, I'd also been watching a lot of the stuff from the Meet Up to 50. And I had built up slightly more interest in films. So I don't know what had changed in those two years, like what that changed with me, what changed with my interest, but I loved it. Like it instantly became a part of my, at that time, top 10. And it started a kind of strange thought process in my head that I had been completely wrong about this movie. I had been seeing it, or at least from my perspective, I had been completely wrong about this movie. I had been seeing it from a very specific perspective. And I didn't know why, but I didn't know that what I used to think was a bad film was now a good film. And that started to make me interested in the rest of the INB Top 250. And it was actually a, thanks to me, the media communication education in, in a way that I really started to give older films a second chance because they put on like Monty Python and they put on uh, Citizen Kane. They put on several of these classic films. And I don't remember which one I saw at home personally, and which one I didn't, but I quickly learned that, huh, I, I believe that films that weren't made, say, before the 80s were particularly good. Clearly, films made in the 70s are good. Why wouldn't films from the 50s or 40s or 30s be any good? Uh, and the thought I had in my mind was, okay, when did they become good? When? So I started going uh, again to the bit of the 50 and getting a few of these films. Uh, I think I started with Casablanca. I saw it and I loved it. And I started going through most of the mainstream classic films. Like, I guess it would be more of the mainstream canon, like Frankenstein, etc. And at that time too, I think that 
just the classic acting. It, it actually appealed to me in a way very similar to the way 3D movies appealed to a lot of people, or at least appealed to a lot of people like a few years later, because that, wow, this is a completely different experience. I haven't seen anything like this before. So it was kind of like this semi-surreal experience of something different. And it just got me really excited about 30s movies, 40s movies, etc. And for a decent amount of time there, I would try to record any film from that period, no matter, like, at that point, I didn't even really care about ratings or NDB, et cetera. I essentially just tried to record anything on TV that was older than, say, 40, 50 years, or, or 30, 40 years, record it and watch it. There's, there's some curating going on as well, obviously, for a TV channel. Like, why would the TV channel in the country with, at that point, probably five, six TV channels put on something that wasn't particularly liked? But uh, that was my early education. It was essentially just recording anything that was slightly older, and then very soon anything that had a slightly high rating on IMDb. And then I developed a very serious film addiction. <laughs> I think we've more or less catched up to the same point. So we've gotten to the point that we discovered IMDb, we saw the INDB top 250, and we started working on it. And that seems to be the point, yeah, and that seems to be kind of like a merger point for all of us. And I think it's almost even the same time. Like, I probably started working on it back in 2006. Uh, it, was, uh, it was in 2011, I think, for me. I think it's interesting just the different paths that everyone has taken to get to, to this point. Um, myself, I used to be on the Rotten Tomatoes forum. This was in the late aughts, and that was just a fantastic resource to talk about films. And somebody randomly in a, in a topic mentioned ICM. I thought, oh, that sounds cool. So I went over and joined it. And uh, in a lot of ways, that's really changed my life. And I think Chris and Adam know a lot about about that I mean interesting uh, just hearing everybody's different perspective is there still a Rotten Tomato forum now because I, I've never heard of it now for some reason the wise people at Rotten Tomatoes basically did away with the forum this was maybe 2010 or so which was really a shame there's a, a sort of an offshoot of it that some of those people have and I forget what it's called right now. I visit it occasionally, but it, it was never the same after that. Well, I think that could even be a good topic for a later for a later podcast, just the death and destructions of all forums around the world, essentially. I've been going with most websites and forums over the past five years, maybe. Because that's, like, that's where most of my interest in film also developed. It wasn't just the IMDb top to 50, it was uh, the IMDb message boards for me. So I, I joined, when you joined IMDb, at that point, there were this, this massive collections of message boards. They were probably among the most active message boards in the world. Uh, the biggest one being Film General, and there was also classic movies, and just so, so many others. That's where, you know, I started see getting recommendations, started to get to know these other people. Some of them, actually a lot of them are members of the ICM forum now as well. This is like, these are the people who push me further than the IMDb top 250. I think that's, I think there's a point when you're, how do you put this? I think there's, I think there's a point when you've been watching the IMDb top 250 and you still crave more. You, you want, either you finish it or you finish most of it or you finish the stuff that's interesting to you. Uh, but you want something else. You want to explore, let's say, the canon a little bit further. Uh, and for me, that experience started with Film General, uh, the INDB forum, um, where I just met all of these people that were so much more knowledgeable than me, all of these people who were sharing their lists consistently, many of which I would copy down and, and keep in my Word docs, as I mentioned earlier. And I would just start exploring, learning about them. And that's also how I learned about they shoot pictures, don't they? That's how we learned about that website and started to work on that list as well. And I think that's also a relatively common step. 
like did you guys go the same route of essentially just going from the ILB top to 50 to they shoot pictures or were there other steps or a completely different path? More or less, I, I went from the IM, uh, IMDb top 250 to the 1001 movies you must see before you die first. Then I went uh, to uh, the shoot pictures down there as well, which I've uh, never completed. I'm still working uh, working on it to, to this day. You know, I'm just taking my time. I, do, I don't want to uh, binge watch uh, everything, uh, everything in it. I want to take time to... Uh, uh, appreciate, let's say, um, every film there is there is in it. Uh, I, I've never really um, looked at the forums on uh, IMDb. Oh, you can't now; they're gone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I know. I, I think it was big, uh, back then because my English was not good enough for me to to, to speak in English, so I couldn't uh, join a forum where uh, people would uh, well, obviously you know, speak a language I'm not uh, familiar with. And uh, yeah, actually, I, I found out about the, the I Check Movies forum um, very early on, and uh, I just thought it was a good place for me to stay. So I just um, stayed there and uh, never really took the, um, uh, never really took time to check out the IMDb, the Film General, and Classic Movies. Even though I, I stumbled upon a list that were made by this uh, board uh, some, from time to time. And uh, they're uh, interesting, good lists. So um, uh, it's, it's a shame that I think that these uh, forums are gone because it seemed that uh, there were a lot of uh, quality produced uh, back then. The exciting part about that is that, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's the majority, but uh, at closer to half of the members or the active members of both Film General and Classic Movies went to ICM as soon as it closed. Because we had this month of leeway uh, where they informed us the forums would be closed. And Perception and myself and a few others of the active, uh, of the people who were active at the ICM forum and Film General were just messaging essentially every single person in our friend list saying like, hey, this can be your new home. And I think um, Angel, who runs the um, uh, Dublin the Canon project, he took he used to be at the, the classic uh, board, like that's where DTC originally was born. So he brought with him a massive amount of those people too. When I completed the IMDb uh, top two hundred and fifty, I think similar similar to yourself, Chris, I started exploring the IMDb forums. Um, I think I was more of a lurker at this point. I didn't really post, but I used to enjoy reading what everyone had to say, their film recommendations. And I used to frequent the horror boards um, because at this point, my passion for horror had really developed. Um, I rarely found films that scared me. So I was always looking out for something that could. And I feel that any film that that scares me is, you know, pretty impressive because I've seen so much horror that I... I love being able to still find that kick from films occasionally and um, the IMDb horror boards really helped with that. And then from then on, I moved over to iCheck Movies. I can't remember exactly how I stumbled upon it, um, but once I was on there, it was the uh, most favourite list that really stuck out to me. I watched a few films um, that were high up on that. I think uh, Letter Never Sent was one of the first I selected. I'd never even heard of it, but I found it available on uh, YouTube and it kind of blew me away. I was obviously impressed with the IMDb Top 250, but I felt like I'd surpassed that and found another level of films that were, you know, just as brilliant, if not more. Surpassed it. I love, I love that <laughs> phrasing. But super film buff. <laughs> you get that point where you start saying, I'm not a film buff, I'm a cinephile. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. But, you know, we're all passionate about films and it's it's great that we share this passion and it, it's, it's so fascinating to learn that we've kind of, you know, followed a, a similar path with, um, as we say, the top 250 and IMDb being somewhat of a, a gateway drug and then... By then, the addiction has, has kicked in and we need more brilliant films and where are we going to find them? <laughs> and that's kind of where I check Movies came in. Um, a little bit different that I don't follow any lists anymore. The movies that I choose are either totally random or often uh, recommendations on the forum. Somebody is raving about whatever. I think, well, maybe that's something I could check out. 
And other thing that I often do is when we have uh, results of a poll, look at all the screenshots and some pop out and I remember once I finished the top 250, we already set up a Facebook group for I Check Movies, and then there was various other groups. So the first thing I remember moving on to is the top 50s, and to be top 50s like for the decades. A lot of the older decades, not older films, were in the top 250. So I, I started watching all of them. Eventually, I am to be... I completely forgot about them. Yeah, that's when when I first was on I Check Movies, once I so yeah, that was my that was my big interest, and I also remember working through Japanese lists that became a big interest. Once the once the forum started, like a lot of my a lot of stuff I watched, and you know through forum lists or recommendations on there. So that was a very good that was a good way to find new films. And eventually, yeah, eventually I just stopped working on lists and randomly chose films and what I was in the mid for. Similar to me as well. I think my path was more about eventually breaking away from INDB because it was still a few years until ICM was, was to be created. So uh, if, I'm not sure how many of you frequented uh, the Film General forums, but they were pretty much infested with trolls and they would consistently kind of see the same topics over and over and over again people who weren't really that interested in films or were asking very basic questions. So the core user base ended up creating a forum that was separate from uh, IMDb. We called it Film General 2 or FG2. And then eventually there was an FG3. And essentially, we created a community of people who had like a much, much greater interest in films and it was much easier to find recommendations. You would start to form slightly better relationships with these people as well. So you would know, okay, this person has similar interest to me, so I can more, I can quickly realize that if they like a film, I would most likely like that film as well. And again, this was before ICM, so we didn't really have lists to, uh, to help us with. So that was, that was a really good experience as well. And then at one point, somebody just messaged. I don't remember who it was. I don't remember if it was a thread or a private message, but they told me about I Check Movies. I, I went there. I saw that I could check films on this and I would remember what I had seen. So I joined. And that's more or less how I found it. Like I was just a regular standard member. I was not part of this uh, top 250 um, group that... Adam, Gary, and maybe OK was were part of. Um, I was just using um, using I, I, I check movies until I got that one uh, message, that one uh, internal message from uh, from the owners informing me that it was now an un unofficially unofficial Facebook group. I wasn't part of that group, by the way. What did you say, OK? wasn't part of that group, by the way. Oh, okay, okay, so you had the same experience as me, and you joined uh, Isaac Movies, and then you got that email, too. No, I didn't even get the email, because <laughs> I was in the top 100, 100 or whatever. I read about the forum, where I also don't remember, but I didn't get the email. Oh, there was a period where I must have had a lot of free time, because I remember inviting, like, the top 500 users uh, to the forum. I in there, oh. I thought you were on the Facebook group as well for some reason. But no, there, so be before there was a forum, there was a Facebook group. And that group essentially withered away. And Adam and Lauren decided to create the ICM forum, the officially unofficial forum of IsaacMovies.com, which is the forum we know and love today. Which was, I guess, around 2010, right? Because this is the 10-year anniversary. No, the forum was 2011. Next year is a 10-year anniversary. Grip started, I think, in 2010. I know I joined ICM in 2009, but then I guess the Facebook group might have started in 2010. Yeah, I'm, it have been 2009, actually. Uh, there's a lot of, yeah, like Gary says, maybe that's for another day because there's a lot of drama in history. Exactly. <laughs> well, that, that's had several podcasts and several best-selling I'll take another seven hours, so <laughs> we need to talk about it. So I, I think 
so at this point, we've covered more or less how we got interested in films, how we got hooked, and how that more or less develops. Let's talk a little bit about where we are today, or rather, what's different now from when you were first getting into movies or like the first few years of your cinephilia. And we can start with Gary again. Well, <clears throat> um, I, I have watched a lot of movies. I think I have pretty much exhausted the canon. So these days I watch for pleasure primarily. I do follow some lists just, uh, just for fun. I um, I completed the big noir list. Um, there's additions every month or so. I just keep up with that. Uh, I've been working on the zombies list lately. Just uh, I'm stuck at home, nothing to do. So uh, just watching films that don't require a lot of uh, a lot of brain power is uh, <laughs> has fit in with my mood lately. But um, I watch I watch pretty much everything mainstream trash um whatever now I mean, mainstream trash what do you mean i'm sorry when you say mainstream trash what do you mean oh well um now the theaters are closed right now but my wife and i had the uh subscription to the movie theaters where you could see three three movies a week if you wanted to and so we were watching pretty much everything new that came out um, not necessarily everything that we were particularly interested in but it was a way to pass the time and something to do with bad boys for life and uh, uh, downhill i mean you know all this recent stuff that's been coming out so tom how do you how do you think that your interest in film has changed from first discovering all of these lists? Well, I think that it's changed quite dramatically from what I used to be interested in. As Gary pointed out, mainstream trash is kind of the way that most people get into cinema. So I used to love all that, you know, loud explosions and stuff like that. But now um, I see my taste shifting towards more kind of um, foreign and art house cinema, just try and get a you know, a different kick from the, the films that I watch. Um, something that entertains me, but also, you know, stimulates me, something that's thought-provoking and, you know, it's, it's something that uh, resonates on a, on a deeper level. Um, part of this was, um, Passion was helped with um, a volunteer position I took up with a, a local film theatre a, a few years back, which was in an art house, an independent art house cinema. I used to love volunteering there because I'd literally just have to spend um, about 30 minutes selling tickets to everyone and then I got to go into the film for free. There was just the one auditorium and there had to be one person in there as the, uh, the fire warden, uh, so to speak. So I always offered for that. I was happy to stay after selling the tickets to watch the film. They would often put on um, Q and A sessions with people involved in films. Um, so there was a, a great uh, Kubrick season at one point, and um, there was a man called John Jordan who was the sound editor on Clock or Clockwork Orange, and he got to uh, introduce the film and things like that, where there's more discussion involved around the film, really helped to kind of uh, expand my uh, knowledge and interest of films. So it's it's uh, that was great fun, uh, but unfortunately, when I relocated, I uh, had to give that up. I also attend a um, a film festival every year called Grimfest, a great horror film festival in in Manchester, and that's about four or five days of just sitting in a dark room watching six or seven horror films a day, and and that to me is is pure heaven. Um, I don't know if anyone else in in the group has been to film festivals, but I would love to. Um, travel and, and potentially do some more abroad at, at some point. I've been to the Berlin Film Festival once and that was very nice. I especially like it when the original creator is present to answer questions. Of course, with some of us technically went to a film festival together. Remember back in 2015 when you came over to visit me? So that was, that was Adam, Gary, 
you and several other people and you went to see uh, ta uh, Taxi. <laughs> we don't want Gary to start talking about Iranian contentious topic. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good film from what I remember. I'm not sure, Gary. Gary, did you like it? Were you asking me? Yeah, what did you think of Taxi? Oh, it was great. I I didn't miss a minute. <laughs> Speaking of uh, film festivals, I went to Cinecon in Los Angeles um, 20, 2018. That was a, a four-day festival. They had it at the Egyptian Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. And this festival has been going on for 50 plus years. And it was awesome. Um, Andrea went to it as well. Um, and they showed a lot of, they were Hollywood films, but um, ones that hadn't been seen anywhere in 50 years or more, which was very cool. I think that's one of the main things I really, really, really miss, especially living in Malta, which is just the lack of proper film festival. We, we actually had a really good, not a good one, but the, the same one we went to. It's been getting better. And it happened to land on the one weekend, the only weekend in my entire career when, that I had to work. And Bellatar was actually here. He was presenting the Turin horse and was discussing it afterwards. And I was so pissed off. Mm. I think that's probably the biggest art house director we've ever managed to get here. The other thing that uh, I've been to, I went three years in a row. They canceled it this year. It was supposed to be in June again. The Library of Congress uh, Conservation Center is in Virginia, and they do a uh, three-day event called Mostly Lost. And there's about 200 people in the audience. A lot of them are in the film business, so it's very interesting. And the concept is that they show clips or uh, what they have existing of old silent films and try to identify them. So people, as they're watching, they yell out clues from the audience. Uh, it, it's really a, a fascinating thing uh, because people have different expertise. There will be an old car and somebody will say, oh, that's a 1924 Hudson or, or whatever. Hopefully they'll have it again next year. They had to cancel it this year, of course, because of the uh, pandemic. You've gone down a pretty interesting, almost academic route there. Where you're interested in trying to help people find films and label films, etc. That's, that's a real, it's a really interesting thing to do. But was that something you were always interested in? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. That was a that was a relatively recent thing for me. Tom brought up one thing that was also really interesting, which was that, and we started with again this this fantastic term that's going to get a lot of people quite pissed off by this term mainstream trash and just getting tired of it. And I think that this idea of slowly becoming, like the more films you watch, the less time and less interest you have for you know, the stand, the, most of the standard commercial films. I, I think that's more of a common thread. Uh, and I see the same in me too. Like I will still watch the biggest recent films. Uh, and many of them will be great, but the type of film I would probably have watched when I was 15, 16, like, it doesn't really do that much for me anymore. And I think that's this thing of tiring of the standard conventions, the sta like the standard plot thing, this, the, kind of, the kind of cinema that doesn't really do anything with the cinematic medium, if you will. You get a little bit bored of it, you want something more. Is that something that everybody else feels as well? And we can maybe jump on to Clem. I don't think I've, I've ever really been interested in uh, mainstream trash at, at any point. Uh, I think when I started becoming uh, interested in uh, in uh, in films, I I wasn't really watching much films before, uh, so I never really had a phase where I would just watch uh, mainstream things and then uh, jumped later in my life to uh, more slower or art, uh, art house films and stuff like that. You were never so with Michael Bay, in other words. No, not really. Uh, I think I saw my first Michael Bay film when I was about uh, 21. So it was like two, three years ago, four years ago, maybe something like that. I guess the most mainstream things that uh, I had seen back then were the Harry Potter films. Lord of the Rings, same. I must have watched them uh, about uh, eight, eight years ago, something like that. Which I, I, I actually liked, uh, like these uh, films. 
yeah, overall, I've never really been uh, uh, a movie goer that would uh, first go to mainstream films and then uh, evolve toward uh, something, uh, watching more slower films. I think I went straight to the more um, uh, uh, IMDb top, top 250, which includes some mainstream films, obviously, but uh, which is less less uh, mainstream trash than actual mainstream trash, I would say. Really interesting part to this essentially goes straight from not being interested to films to just watching the most recognized great films. It is it's an interesting jump. Uh, I know for me, especially even after I was I started watching the NB Top 250, like my main interest was still, you know, baseline baseline narratives. I wanted to see some a film that was quick fun experiences, which is probably why I like a lot of people spent my first few years as a film buff watching a lot of noir films, like a lot of these well-made, cool, short and fast, you know, not necessarily crime stories, most of them are, but just this, I was far more interested in the narratives of them or the standard experience of it, the, the face value experience of it. And then the more I was watching film noirs, the more I was watching classic dramas, etc., the more I started to be interested in, or even the more I started to be less interested in that and be more interested in uh, the type of films that challenged the medium in some way. And I wanted to see something that uh, the main focus was on the tool set itself. Like the main focus of the filmmaker was on the form. Um, at least that, that, that's, how I, that's how I started moving about the medium. That first it was quick entertainment, then it was quick entertainment that was made well, and then it was essentially just being entertained or being captured by uh, these artists or directors doing things they found interested, interesting in the medium. I haven't actually been watching a lot of films over the last couple of years. I think I watched so many a few years and I kind of turned out a little bit. So. When I moved to London, kind of, I don't know, the last couple of years I've gone back to some films in the cinema again. My laptop wasn't working for a while. I didn't, my accounts, you know, on certain websites were no longer active. Yeah, I haven't been watching a huge amount, but I don't know how to describe it. You know, I'm trying to pick films in the cinema that still interest me. I'm not, I'm not interested really in the big blockbusters, but I think, I think it's still important to watch recent films are mainstream, but are a little bit different from Michael Bay kind of films. And I'm getting a little bit more interested in films again recently. And because my main interest has moved on to like Japanese films, some animated films, that kind of thing. Um, I really, I don't know why, I just lost a lot. I've lost quite a lot of interest in the last couple of years. I think the same happens to most of us, to be honest. Like I, I've gone through several dry spells myself, and I think one is possibly coming on now too, unless this podcast really uh, revigorates me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yes, I think it just goes. I think, I think it's just you want that kind of special experience, and at at some points, that experience, like no matter what you watch, it it won't happen, or it'll be more harder and harder to get that experience. And then maybe it's best to just take like a longer period off, and then it will come back. I think the, the one thing that I'm actually shocked by, because I thought this was where everybody ended up, especially when I was back at the Film General, which is that I really thought. The journey was this terrible, terrible mainstream trash, then into more commercial middle-brow middle brow cinema, and then into, you know, high drama, then art house, and then experimental. But I never really landed on the experimental films. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Maybe that's what's going to break me out of this, this current void. Maybe I'll suddenly become one of these people who will love Arnold Rainer. And we'll uh, be watching uh, Stan Breckage films on repeat, but like it hasn't happened yet, and uh, I don't know why. Like I always thought that's where all of us ended up if we just watched enough. So you're the, you're the last one who hasn't really gone through how your viewing habits and view of cinema has changed since you first got interested. So maybe you could uh, run us through it. I'm still pretty much preferring narrative movies. I've seen quite a few of the other mental stuff. And while I appreciate it more than when I started, I don't think it will ever be different. Instead, much I watch a lot more than I used to. 
sometimes some movies that I would never have watched for. I want to wrap things up. Let's just do like final thoughts and start with Adam. I guess the final thing I want to say is thanks to Chris for organizing all this. And I don't think we'd have done this at any point. You setting it up and doing all the work and editing everything. Um, so hopefully some people on the forum will listen. Maybe some people will join as guests. Um, but yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, I'd like to join Adam in thanking you, Chris, for uh, putting this together. I really appreciate your enthusiasm. I think this is a, will be a great thing for us. Uh, and it's really nice to meet Clem and Tom, some new film friends uh, from around the world. I, I love getting together like this. So I look forward to the next one. So again, I would like to echo uh, Adam and Gary's sentiments. So thank you very much for putting this together, Chris. It's been great talking to you all and learning about your film watching habits. And it's uh, quite surprising how much similarities there are in our journey so far. So I'm certainly looking forward to getting together again and exploring some more topics and uh, finding out some more about everyone. Uh, well, I won't, won't be very original. I'm just going to say uh, thanks for um, organizing this uh, this uh, podcast uh, thanks to uh, everyone for participating it was a great learning about uh, uh, different uh, journeys and getting to know you guys a bit uh, bit more and uh, yeah I'm very impatient to uh, I'm really looking forward to the next uh, the next uh, podcast I'd like to echo everyone else and thank Chris for organizing this it was fun uh, hope to see you next week maybe essentially everything you've been saying as well thank you so much for joining uh this has been great fun it's been fantastic learning about what everybody likes what everybody doesn't and uh we will be inviting other people to, uh, to come on and talk with us and we will try to find more and more interesting topics and we will also obviously get better at this as we go along i'm sure we learned quite a bit today thank you so much for joining and also let me do the outro thank you all for listening we have been Talking Images, the officially unofficial podcast of the ICM Forum. Join us again soon. Bye, Craig.